My intention for today's episode is to instill more hope and faith in yourself as a man. Yeah, this is gonna be for the men today. Ladies, you're gonna like it too, but men, this is really for you. I know what it feels like to not believe in myself at certain times, in certain areas, to doubt or to compare yourselves to others and know how that affects your confidence in showing up in life. And no area of your life makes this more visceral than when it comes to your relationship with women. And today I have a special treat for you. I am bringing on one of my favorite authors, Zan Perion. Now, Zan has a history of being involved in the seduction and pickup and dating and attraction community for the past 20 years. He was featured in the book, The Game, but really this is his seminal work to date, The Alabaster Girl. When I read this, it really loosened me up and had me fall more in love with life and myself and women. And I saw that have a huge impact on the types and caliber of women that have become attracted to me naturally. And I want to share that with you. So I invited Zan to come on the podcast where I pick his brain. We talk about beauty. We talk about uh, connecting with the sacred. We talk about finding yourself as a human being and the importance that that is if you want to move out of the confusion that there is in the world, move away from that world of, of, of all the anxiety and depression into one of hope where you're reconnected with your true self, you feel a sense of sacredness in your life and it produces beneficial results. The things you've been wanting naturally are more magnetized to you with much more effortlessness. So if that appeals to you, if you're interested, you're gonna to love today's episode. I'm your host, Eric Copeland, and welcome to another episode of The Music of Life. I'll see you inside. Mr. Zan Perion, welcome. Uh, thank you. <laughs> it is uh, absolutely my pleasure to have you on the show. Um, you know, when we were talking off camera, actually, we talked a couple weeks ago for the first time. And I told you I literally had your name written on a uh, notebook of someone I would love to uh, uh, have you on the podcast. And lo and behold, here you are. So it's amazing how things can work out. Uh, for any of you guys who may not know who Zan Perion is, he is best known for being the author of the book, The Alabaster Girl. And uh, you also were in the book, The Game, right? I think yeah, that you were kind of featured that. So Almost like, uh, yeah, so if, if, if anyone has ever been familiar with the whole... Uh, world of like dating and attraction or learning um, even for a while it was called pickup um, or seduction communities things like that Zamperion has been a staple but in in you know what I've really liked about you Zan in my experience um, when I especially when I read your book it was at a time in my life where I uh, I really was starting to come into my own with you know I'd been through a lot of the you know been through Evan pagans programs you know i know you were featured in that i got that right here this is old school here advanced dating techniques w dating that was in that. Into, yeah you were you had some uh some uh cameos in there um wow. but that that's what introduced me to the whole world of really personal growth um dating and attraction and what i loved about that era and what i what i want to commend you on what you've always been about is you've really like Eben was this way and you were this way. It was always about the, the, the love for the self, the inner, it, it, there was a lot of focus on, on becoming a, um, the type of person that is attractive as opposed to some type of external, like a uh, rote routine or pickup line kind of a thing that you use to, sure. um, you know, to generate the result. And when I read your book, I, felt so re relieved to hear another man talk about some of the things that I was experiencing inside with terms of like how I um, just started to real feel really like a love and appreciation for the beauty of women at such a much deeper level. Um, in, in, your, in your book, you, you just spoke to that in such an amazing way. It's, it's, it's a very poetic uh, book about it's like your your kind of imaginary conversation with a woman on a train, and uh, for anyone who hasn't read it, and you want to really calibrate your mind towards what does it really mean, like what is beauty and and the power of witnessing beauty in yourself and in another individual, and, and what that unlocks in your world, and it, it's applicable in all areas of life. But for a lot of us men, we really 
the biggest test of that in our life is our relationship with women, you know, um, and when you see women respond to that and you see them soften and drop into their feminine and, and trust you and give you liberties and freedoms that you thought, frankly, weren't maybe weren't possible, you really do become a believer. So I want to thank you, Zan, for for taking your 10 years to write this book, brother. Thank you. Well, thank you. That's very kind. Very nicely said, too. Wow. Oh, my pleasure. Well, Zan. I wanted to get you on the show for a lot of reasons, but one of the, the things I'll just share with some things that have been on my mind. I'd love to get your, your take. I know you have some new direction and you, you're writing a book, another book. Um, mm. And I've just noticed that um, there's a lot of, and again, this is social media food too. There's a lot of polarization in the world when it comes to your relationship. I think a lot of men today are more, in a lot of ways are more confused than ever. You kind of have this like rift where there's this, you know, this, the one segment of men that want to go their own way that you have the, um, the kind of the, the return of the hyper-masculine kind of alpha male kind of energy that wants to be very polarizing and grounded in their like strength. And there's some value in that. And then you have the kind of like the, a lot of people that get caught into the people pleasing or guys that maybe don't say like, I don't really resonate with like this kind of like hard ass alpha energy. And so they kind of feel like, well, what's my place with, with success in life and with women. And you just have such a way of being in the heart and really integrating these things that upper and lower energy, as you call it. And I would love to just riff on that for a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, like things have changed since I was in the dating world and since I wrote the, the, the book, the book came out 10 years ago and things have changed. Um, and you, and, and the concerns of men and women are different than they were even five years ago. There's this division and this ideology kind of centered way of thinking, which wasn't there before. It was just guys trying to get laid girls trying to meet a good guy and, um, and it's changed, you know, and, and it's gone down a, as you said, I mean, you said it very articulately, there's a, there's a division, divisionary type of path we've gone on and where the hallmark and the watchword is division. And, um, and, and there's no messages. For, uh, I mean, I always, I, I talk to men, I talk to women too, but I look at men and the, the, the concerns that young men are, the things that young men are saying today are different than they were 20 years ago. And young men today have lost in, in general, and I'm gen, excuse me, I'm generalizing. They've lost the concept of hope in general. And they think, and 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 they've, there's an there's an entire movement that men are that you alluded to that men are caught up with young men like a 19 or 20 year old is saying they go down this the road of which I just heard yesterday <laughs> believe it or not I'm, like, I'm not aware I don't I don't follow anybody's talks I don't watch the YouTube videos really I just read a lot of literature but the idea of this concept of the black pill which is yeah. women are so destruct so so in empowered and so in control that men not not you know 20 years ago they were saying okay well women are strong let's figure this out how do we go forward as men and now the message is women are strong and you can't go forward as men give up and 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 women are going to you know uh be be violently against you and take your money and take your possessions and, you know, and, and, and marriage is a sham and it, it, you never heard this before. So it's a real, and, 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 yeah. and you know, and, yeah. and, and, and men, there's no messages for men that have balance and, and kindness and uh, empathy in it. The messages for men are you either go down this road of destruction of, of being angry at women and getting back control, resting back to control, which is the hyper masculine, uh, like beat our chests and like, you know, yeah. you know, fuck bitches and this kind of stuff. Or the, the, the only other alternative 
is sensitive yogurt eating nice guy, you know, <laughs> you know, and there's nothing in between. It's like, what the hell? There's nothing in between. There's like, it's, it's, you, re- you either go down this like strong man, yeah, yeah. caveman energy or be the sensitive, uh, nice guy who's a feminist which is r- ridiculous when you think of it you know so there's no good messages man i just talked to a high school not a high school oh, really? i taught high school students here in romania 200 of them at a at a kind of a, a vo- vocation uh event and i was one of the speakers to come and talk to these these young people that are aged from you know 15 to 19 or 18 or whatever Mm-hmm. Men, you know, you boys and girls, and I'm standing in front, and I'm telling that there's a message of hope in this world of no hope, because I believe it. I'm, a, I have a lot of faith in yeah. young people, and I have a lot of faith in the future, and I don't have a dismal attitude of like, okay, the world sucks and women suck, and I don't have that. Yeah. So, but there's nobody. There's, there's very few people that have that message. It's such a strong fight. Yeah. So anybody that got a YouTube channel or, in, or has got an influence at all, they're saying uh, they go down this path of fighting, even like, you know, of, of anger at the other side. And uh, I don't have it in me, man. I don't have that. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's called wisdom. That's called wisdom. Um, the, you know, I remember, first of all, couldn't agree more. I, uh, I remember when I, um, when I was 24, um, you know, I, I grew up, I, I was actually a virgin until I was 30 because of religious reasons. I was, uh, I grew up in a pretty high control religion and, um, just took me that long to finally wow. own my, my sexuality. And, uh, but at 24, I'd gotten the W dating program and, uh, started actively, you know, putting myself in front of women and, and practicing, so to speak, confronting all those fears. But what, what was so amazing was that like the, the feeling of like hope, you mentioned the word hope. And, and I do believe in people too. I think when people have true principles and they can see the benefits of something, they'll go for it if they can just see it. And I think one of the things you're bringing up that I want to illustrate here is that part of the issue here is that a lot of like the world has become attracted to the drama a lot of the, the social media rig- algorithms and things yeah. you want to see the people fighting and, and it becomes a distraction from time honored wisdom and truth that maybe isn't as loud and isn't as sensational, but yet it's the thing that you need that will kind of heal your life. Um, and that's what they're trained on. That's what yeah. young people are trained on through, yeah. through the university system, through the media, through social media, through online discourse is that you've got to stand on one side or the other and you've got to, take a stand as opposed to a nuance, which is, which is, yeah, you know, like, and, and trying to, to hear the other side and trying to listen. Yeah. You know, yeah. I remember, you know, imagine, imagine believing that if you have sex with a girl outside of marriage, that it, it you literally believe that it's a, it has eternal consequences to your salvation, right? That, How old that was you like, now, Eric. Huh? How old are you now? I'm 43. I'm 43, 43 so, and I made up for so lost time, baby. <laughs> 13 years ago, man. Um, yeah. yeah. And you were in this staunch, uh, I presume, Christian religion, right? I grew Christian up in the Mormon faith. Yeah. Mormon I'll lay it faith. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh huh. I know. Yeah. I know. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, a very uh, strong, strong thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and, and on the one side, there's beauty in it. And the other side, it's, um, it's, you know, there's too much control. And, and again, the, that lack of nuance. So, you know, my journey has been one of like a, for me, like exploring the art of women was as much a spiritual path as it was anything, because, um, you know, you do, you have to overcome and confront any guilt and shame or tension that you have that you carry, especially in that those that um, you're more, you're more like primal aspects of who you are. And at the same time, you have to also not lose the the heart and um the the higher self that just because you could have a a girl that night doesn't mean that you should in that moment or whatever you know like you, you have to make these nuanced decisions um mm. 
and your so your book played a very strong role in kind of inter- helping me integrate um, my th- those uh, that yin and that yang, so to speak, right? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Got you, man. That's cool. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, and in my intention with with this channel, with the music of life is that, you know, the subtitle is this, the art of creating a life worth dancing to. Um, because I also like, you know, I'm a firm believer in the, um, in fact, I dare you to go study any ism out there, Hinduism, Buddhism, go look at, uh, true Christianity, look at the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, like r- r- look at, uh, honestly, new age spirituality, look at all these things. And what you're going to find um, is that it all comes down to really, truly loving, accepting the self and finding, um, beauty within yourself first. And whenever you judge another person, whenever you get caught in the division, you actually are in resistance to the self. Um, and when you, it's a fascinating thing, the relationship between how you feel about yourself and how you show up with others. Um, it's like a mirror, you know, it's, and and it's like an inverted mirror in a way, you know, we see, we experience ourselves through how we experience others. It's pretty, it's pretty fascinating how it works, but where you're in the heart, I believe that when you're in the heart, you care about truth and you're also, you also can see that a person is just a human being. So you can love a person no matter what, even if you don't agree with their behaviors. And you can stay firm in like what you, your values, but you don't, that doesn't mean that you have to have hatred or anger towards the other person. And I've confronted my own societal programming with my relationship with women where things will come up and I'll feel some like, if I really am honest with myself, I might feel a little emasculated or anger towards like how women behave. But then when I look at the circumstances they're in, it all actually makes sense too. So you have to come from that place of empathy, like understanding that like women are responding to a a situation. It might be survival based. It may not be, they may not be in their hearts as well, but just like men have their response, women have their response as well. And when they judge each other, they're not (laughs) getting to the heart of the matter. Right. And it is difficult. How do we break through to them, Zan? (laughs) Well, women, women are, yeah, the, the worst quality a man or woman can have is to be judgmental and it's judgmentalism. I don't know if that's a word or not, but it's like the worst quality. It's the opposite of generosity of spirit, you know, which is reaching out and trying to see and trying to understand and trying to pay attention. Um, it's the opposite of gratitude. So, um, Well, I have a question for you. Let me ask you this hypothetical. Sure. If you, um, if you could time travel back to your 20 year old self, but that 20 year old self was in today's world. Mm. What might you, what might you, what might you convey or want to convey? And, and you got, you got, you got a few minutes, you got, you got a few principles you can instill. Then you got to go. Your time machine's going to send you back. Do I know what I know now? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you I, now. Knowing what you know now, going back to your 20-year-old self, I except you're 20 year old in today's world. If I was 20 years old, knowing what I know now, I'd be unstoppable. I'd, be, I'd rule the world. And I don't mean that in an arrogant way. I just like, wow. Because I didn't know. And anybody listening to this podcast does not know what they have in their youth. You don't know. You know, that's a cliche obviously. Right. Yeah. But I, I look at young, I look at girls now and they, and they say, you know, they hate their nose or they would change everything about their body. And, and, and you and I, and everybody else looks and thinks, are you kidding me? You're, you're like this, you, you're, you're a true, you're beautiful. You're symmetrical. You're perfect. And they can't see it. They only see like I did when I was in my twenties that I, that I suck and I would change everything. And if, you know, I I say to young people, like I said to the the high school students, don't disparage your youth. You have vitality now. You have this health now. And someday you will not have it. You have it now. 
Someday we'll be dead, but we're not dead yet. And someday you're going to lose this. And you, you look in the mirror now and you think, oh, my nose is stupid and my skin is not so great. In 10 years from now, you will cry to have this back again. I see that to young women. They say, oh, I got, I, you know, I feel like I have a little cellulite or I think this. In 10 years from now, you wish you had this body again. And while you have it, you disparage it, you know. Incredible, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's like um, I've been thinking about. I've been talking about these things for twenty years and thinking about it for a long time, man. Yeah, my birthday's in a week. I'm getting. I got gray hair. I'm getting old. I'm going to be sixty in a week. Well, in you ten know? years, you're going to cry for this experience. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I look like so I look at it and I think. I think you know. If only we knew, and if only we know, but of course, youth is wasted on the young, as they say, right? But yeah. the idea is that I have a lot of faith in this young generation is going to come up. These high school students, for instance, are going to reject this Me Tooism yeah. of the, this modern age, which is, you know, Maybe it's Walt Whitman. We, we blame him for song of myself. Like we start to look at ourselves and in, in America, especially there, it's all about my rights. No, my, you know, my, my, uh, yeah, my rights and my, and, and my, myself and my, my self help. And in the rest of the world, you don't have that so much. So you think more of community and, and families and, you know, and, and how can I be a part of a collective? And, and maybe it's America that, that, that changed that whole dynamic because it's all about me, 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 me. The, for instance, in art, the art used to be about, I'm going to create art to show the world maybe yeah. something transcendent or something, you know. And now the art is about the artist. Look at me. Yeah. Celebrate me, you know, and what I can do. And, like, and uh, uh, we got this me, me-ism. I guess you can say, but I, Look, I have a lot of faith that the younger generation is going to come up and say, there's, there's a book called the fourth turning. And the idea is that every generation rejects the regeneration, the, the values and the generation that came before. So from, yeah. you know, 19, the world war two ended and this 1950s generation came along, we can have a house and a chicken in every pot and let's go. And, and that's uh and, and, and a very, positive uh, family unit, nuclear family unit, sort of, you know, 1950s. And the 60s rejected it and said, we, we reject the values of our parents and, and we burn our bras and, we, and, and we're psychedelic and, you know, it was 60s and hippies and free love. And the 70s and, you know, and, and the 80s rejected that. And the 80s was all about consumerism. My, my <laughs> parents were hippies and they're like, uh, oh, free love, baby. And, and we reject that and it's all consumerism and, and every generation rejects what the, the other generation had. So this generation is all about self-medication, therapy, self-help, uh, victim. And the generation that's coming up is going to reject that and say, no, it's going to go back to a fourth turning, which is a, which is the idea. It, it, and I believe it because I talk to young people, teenagers and they're like, we, you know, you, you gave us, uh, immense debt. We can't buy houses. We can't do this kind of stuff. We inherited this and we're going to fix it because we're talking because, because screw you. That's what they're saying yeah. to this generation of over medicated, over therapized, therapized, yeah. whatever. Right. Generation. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, so, yeah. So the, the next I generation, my, my point is the next generation is going to be brilliant. I think so. And, and nice. Yeah, I think, you know, it's the funny thing in life, like, we need pain to wake us up, All right? Pain serves a purpose. Yeah. All right. For me, I've, I, uh, I create an acronym for myself that pain just means paying attention is necessary. It's a call inward. It's a call to find the self. It's, it's a voice that offers, uh, there's gold in pain. There's beauty waiting. It's the message of, it's like the bumpers on the, on the bowling alley trying to keep you in the lane. Uh -huh. uh, right. Yeah. And 
You know, you're right. It, 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 I do notice, you know, as someone who, you know, I'm a, um, I have a certification in life coaching. My, uh, one of my best friends have been a therapist and, or a, a coach and has a doctorate in psychology. And he's been doing that for the past 30 years, worked with tons of men and women. Um, you'd really love him, by the way. Um, mm. So we talk about these things all the time. And the thing with like the medication and the therapy, and, and I deal with friends coming to me. I've had, you know, relationship stuff. They're, you know, I'm the guy they come to, you know, they want to, because I have a grounded perspective on things that they appreciate. Uh, um, but the thing is a lot of so-called medications and so-called therapies are actually avoidance. They're not, ther they're not really like, it's not really, um, confronting the thing that that's being dealt with. It's my belief and my personal experience that it, what I've known to work for me in my own life is if, if I can bring awareness to what I'm uncomfortable with, what I'm judging, or if say if I have anxiety about something, which is a fear of the future, if I can identify what that is, and if I can bring acceptance to th that, like within, learn how to like realize that that's just, a, it, ultimately it's just this silly Zen, it's just a sensation in the body. It's just a sensation in the body at the end of the day. Everything else is story that we tell ourselves on top of it. And if you can confront that sensation, learn how to dance with it, learn how to breathe into mm. it, to relax into it, and to trust, you really are answering the question for yourself, do okay. I trust life? I think it would be um, like Brian Bejan talks a lot about letting go and the, the revealing technique. Um, yeah. It's very similar to that kind of stuff. And I think that's something I'm passionate about wanting people to know about because it is a, it is an answer to these things for anyone who's willing to do it. Um, it's free. You know, you can learn to, to find your, your place of prayer within your place of, right? it doesn't matter what, what spiritual leanings you may or may not have. Yeah. The truth is, is like, you have to, you have to like ask yourself, like, do I trust myself? Do I value myself? Do I love myself? And do I really trust life? And if the answer is no to any of those, those are going to show up in your behaviors. You're going to try to extract from other people validation to make yourself feel good or feel enough or feel lovable or through the plastic surgery or through the consumer, the purchasing. And I think that's the innate, I think that's what the generations are rejecting. You know, they're coming up with fresh youthful energy and they can kind of see it from a perspective of like, you know, that's stupid. It doesn't feel good. And then they get caught in their own whirlwind of something. So the next generation can recalibrate. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, yeah, it's fascinating. Well, I tell you, I think there's a shift happening and about to happen or in happening. And we've got this, we're so narrow, we're so navel gazing, you know, we're so looking in inward and trying to solve our childhoods and, and uh, nobody in history did that ever. They built cities and civilizations and traveled and mm -hmm. did adventures and, and they didn't solve their childhood. Their childhood sucked. Yeah. You know, there's no happy childhoods in all of history. It was, it, it, you know, everybody in entire history and every culture and every continent of the world for every century, they saw a mother couldn't eat because they couldn't feed their, the, the children father was dragged off to war, sister was raped, uh, pestilence came, a disease came and, and killed my, you know, two of my siblings. That's what they saw. They, there's no mm -hmm. one, no, no happy childhoods in all of history. And no one had to resolve their childhood to get on with life. They just said, you know what, I'm gonna go out to the world and I'm gonna go build civilizations. So I'm very optimistic and I, uh, I don't know, man. I just, I just don't have that internal gaze. I'm thinking, wait, wait a minute. We're all broken. We're all, we're all sin. We've all Correct. sinned and fall short, short of the, of the glory of God. You know, yeah. we, 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 you yeah. know, in Genesis it said, you know, uh, because you ate of the, of, of, of the fruit of the, you know, tree of life uh, or the knowledge of good and evil. Um, you're going to have pain and sorrow all your lives. And, and Eve, you're going to give childbirth in pain. And Adam, you're going to toil all the days of your life. You know? So, mm -hmm. so, so, so life is sorrow. And like, and, and life is, is full of, of, of this. 
uh, energy of brokenness. And because you know that, and everybody's broken, mm -hmm. we can say, well, wait a minute, let's stand on this earth and let's have a different conversation. So the yes. conversation is that we're having today, the conversation that is out there in the, in the wind today and online, it, it's not, it's not real. And I check out from it. I don't want to have that conversation. I want to have a conversation of what is, what is real? What yeah. is beautiful? What is lovely? You know? And um, yeah. it's not because I have rose colored glasses and I'm thinking, okay, the world, oh yeah, we can, you know, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not pan gloss. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. uh, Voltaire's Candide where, you know, life is, you know, perfect, but at the same time, we're too caught up in our own self-correction and we don't need it. Yes. We are broken yes. and the girls we need are broken and we need to go forth and say, yeah, I'm broken and I'm here. I'm, I'm showing up. Yeah, it, yeah. It's a paradox because the joke is whenever you go through a, if you're going through a, let's just say a, a therapy or spiritual healing process, the, the joke of it all is, is that there's actually nothing wrong. What is all, all it's actually teaching you to do is exactly what you have installed by default, which is an acceptance of who you are in your past. You can look at your childhood. You can look at things that supposedly were wrong or went wrong, and you can have gratitude for those things. Because what you're seeing is that I extracted lessons. This was like how this is like shaped me. This helped to like create the adventure in my life. This is like you, 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 you shift the frame towards a, 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 a positive, optimistic point of view. Yeah. And when you can tune your reticular activating system system into optimism, you get optimism in return. You actually perceive it. You see it. You see opportunity. And, 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 and then you do feel like building a civilization. You feel like building a kingdom. You feel like following your, you know, something that's a, a true passion of yours. And that's the missing thing I'm noticing where people don't know how to access that, Zen. They don't know how to access it. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like and you were, you, you were caught up in this, in, you know, in no disrespect to anything yeah. in the Mormon religion until you were 30 years old. Yep. And we think, well, man, if only, if only, if only I didn't, but you can't, you can't disparage your path, you know? No. It's like, it's, be, <laughs> it's why you're, it's why you're sitting in the studio right now doing an interview with me because of, of, of what you learned right. through those years. That's why you're curious about these conversations. That's why you have this philosophical bent that you mm -hmm. might not have had if you had, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you didn't have a, you know, yeah. So you can't just, it was a spiritual, it was, it was a spiritual incubator that I have outgrew. Right. Right. That's, but it, oh, that's but it, it. Forms something in you. It forms something in you that adds an interesting aspect to your spirit that you would not have had if you didn't have it. Absolutely. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't, wouldn't change, change it. it. Right. No, no. Yeah. Um, have you, so I'll, I'll share something with you. I learned, I'm curious what your take is on this. There's a, a there's a simple formula for, for true self-esteem. Okay. To build true self-esteem. Uh, I give credit to doc uh, or Caroline, Mies, um, uh, she has a series on Gaia called uh, Spiritual Power or Sacred Power. But I really like this. This, 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 this is one of those things that kind of rung, rung my bell and stuck with me. The formula for self-esteem is whenever you, when you feel that desire to build the civilization, so to speak, as you put it. In other words, we have a creative energy. We all have a creative force within us. Yeah. There's something that yeah. wants to emerge out of us. It's kind of... Um, each and every individual, no matter who you are watching this, you have certain unique aptitudes, certain, certain, maybe you're, you're good with people. You're good at literature. You're good at, there's something that you just feel. And usually your interests are your clues, something that interests you in that. And if you can take those interests and then develop more skill around them, mastery, and, and begin to follow that path as you, as you have faith in the self in, in believing that, hey, I am valuable. These natural ways of being have value in the world. And as I express that value, there is a reward system built into reality to re reward you. And, and it, it really, it, it builds that sense of, of true self-esteem where you feel good about yourself, not because you're extracting it from other people who are applauding you, but because you took a risk. 
and you, you felt a little fear, like you, you, you felt a little fear, like, oh my God, I'm about to do something like start a podcast or do something that's me or write a book or, you know, get, go for that job or walk up to that girl or whatever it is. And that feeling of taking in the risk, taking a risk in the direction of who you truly are, win, lose or fail will always build your self-esteem. <laughs> uh yeah um yeah as you're saying that all this eric i'm I'm listening and what i'm thinking is man you know like if only we return to aristotle and first principles what he said first principles yeah. what do we need to be true you know and uh um I think we, we need to return to the sacred. That's what I think we need. Yes. That's what we need. Yes. That's what we need. That's what we're missing. Yeah. That's what we're longing for. That's what our heart is crying for. And yep. we do all this self help and, and, and all this self analysis and, and and affirmations and all this kind of stuff because we're because we've lost that that center of gravity of the sacred. So it's what it and, is. And Part of the pain is what we have to accept is that the world at large and the culture at large isn't promoting or supporting that idea. Okay. It's something 100%. that is, yeah, it's something 100%. that, have, yeah, yeah. And we all feel that we feel it. We feel the hole in our heart because mm -hmm. modern society, and, and I'm a scientist and I, or a scientific, scientific mind. And I love futurology and I believe in, the, you know, I, I like science and technology and stuff yeah. at the same time. And I'm so I'm not a lot. I think we should go back to the cabins in the forest. And I don't I don't have that. But I really do believe that we're missing something sacred. We're, we're starved for the sacred and we cut the sacred out. Nietzsche said, you know, God is dead. And all the atheists go, oh, well, that's cool. God is dead. Yeah, yeah. I, Nietzsche is cool. Mm -hmm. But what Nietzsche was really saying is God yeah. is dead. He said this, God is dead. He will remain dead and we have killed him. And what he was really saying is if you take God and the sacred out of community, mm -hmm. good luck, good luck. And, and, and Nietzsche was an, was an atheist. If you take the sacred out of the, out of community, you have no, nothing to base anything on. So, what is um, what does sacred mean to you when you say that word? Like, what would be your salvation? Like, what is salvation to you and to me? And salvation from me? yeah, salvation. Uh, I don't know. Um, I asked all the philosophers I ever met in my life, "What does what does salvation mean to you?" And they're like, "Oh, skirt, 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 skirt. Talk around, talk around." Right. But we have to go back to what we had before, which is a community driven aspect of. And I don't believe in organized religion. I don't think like Buddhism or Christianity or Mormonism or anything is 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 the truth. I don't have that. But yeah. I do believe in the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. which is which is what what beauty Im imbues upon us, you know, beauty. Beauty has a quality of dawning on us and making us feel like maybe I'm 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 part of I'm caught up in something else. And people who take psychedelics, they're caught up in a realm that is that is alter to now. And so um I don't know. It's like uh I I'm trying to write about this right now and I'm having, I'm struggling with it. Yeah. But I do believe that we have taken the sacred out of our existence because of in the enlightenment and mm -hmm. scientism. We've taken the, the concept of the sacred and the transcendent, something beyond us. But any poet or anybody who writes a book like The Alabaster Girl, like I did, mm -hmm. Eric, feels and knows that that book didn't come from me. Correct. I, could, I don't have it in me to write a book like that. I'm just a dude. I'm just a random guy. I'm not a guru. I'm not enlightened. I'm not like, you know, some mystic. I'm just the guy that likes nice, hot, you know, girls, you know, and, and, and heart shaped asses. That's all I am. And something <laughs> mystical comes out of that, you know, from the, yeah. from the, from the profane can come to sacred. 
And so, yes. so my whole concept is that we have, we've, we've turned our way, our face from beauty in art and architecture mm -hmm. in relationships and politics. And we've turned our face away from beauty and empathy and kindness and, and community and communion. And so we need to reclaim that. We need to go back to the sacred. What you learned as a young man in, in Mormonism, and I know there's like, it's, it's control and whatever, but there's also, uh, there's also a strong center of gravity in that, mm -hmm. which communities gathered around. And we've yes. lost that. Yes. You, you understand? Yeah. So that was part I would of the pain, yeah. and say, oh yeah, like Mormonism is, is bullshit and stuff like that. No, we need to return to these kinds of structures and belief systems so that we can be fathers and, 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 and kind and, and good partners in relationship and have a concept of art and beauty and, and mysticism, you know, anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes we have, to we, go back to the there. we have to go back to the sacred. That's, that's it. Yeah. You're trying to, you, you, you when we talked before this call and in the introduction to this call, your 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 whole expression, your whole everything you said was a call and a longing for the for the sacred that we're yeah. longing for. We want to go back. Yeah, yeah I get we're chills talking about, about it. Yeah, it's um, it's the difference between heaven and hell right here, right now. And yeah, it's it's that. And, and it's life or death. It is. Yeah. You know, yeah. I I talk to young men in the, in the West, and they're suiciding. And they're incels and they're school yeah. shootings yes. because nobody is giving this message. So you have a platform, you have a, you have this message, you know, you have a, your podcast you're doing. This needs to be the message that we need to return to the sacred for young men yeah. and for young women, for certain. What you it, learned it, as a it, child, it, we have to return to that. Wow. Can you it, imagine that? It, huh? Yeah. And, and, and for them to, know that it doesn't mean you have to go to your grandfather's religion to do it or whatever. 100%. Like it, it, it's a, it's about, and in fact, I'll tell you what my personal belief on what I think salvation is. There okay. was a concept I was taught in, in Mormonism um, that just, I'm going to extract out from, from, uh, cause there's truth in it. It's the concept of like, um, experiencing what would be like a spiritual death and the, what creates spiritual death is like in religion, they would call it sin. What I think sin actually is not that you displease some external God, but when you, whenever you just think about it, you are a gifted life and you have life force moving through you and that life force wants to express and you are part of everything. You, you are important. You exist. You have value because of your existence. Yeah, you are, you are here. And those desires are looking for expression in the world. And when you resist those, when you bury those talents, when you get caught in judgment and fighting, it, it contracts you. You now experience contracted emotions like anxiety and depression and guilt and shame. And those... Those things are a contraction because what, what depression really is, the word depressed means to press down, which is the opposite of express, which is letting out. And what happens mm. is through judgment, we repress the true self. And then we experience a spiritual disenlightenment or a sense of death, right? And we now experience the world as like just a place of Darwinistic survival of the fittest, and there's no transcendent beauty that you're able to perceive. And it feels like, and it's something feels wrong, very off about it. And we try to medicate ourselves. We try to, you know, watch enough porn. We try to do anything, but feel those emotions and having the courage to go in and open yourself back up means you have to let go of judgment and maybe cry and let go of shit and, and get present, like learn to accept who you are and where you're at. And that creates salvation you are saved from the hell. You're able to enter the, the, um, the heart consciousness, the car that where you, where you actually experience your own personal beauty and then you feel free to express it and you experience, and this is what's awesome about it. You experience, I believe that 
whether it's a simulation, whatever reality is, something is wired or built into it to reward and to affirm beauty. And you don't know it until you try it. You don't you know go. it until you try it. Yeah. You know, we look back at the beginning of, of uh, modern discourse and philosophy, which is the Greeks, right? And their concept of salvation was your name is, is hymned, is spoken about, is remembered because of the epic deeds you did. And your, and your name is like, like Homer, you know, like, uh, like Achilles and stuff like that, Odysseus and stuff like that, because of the, what you did. So you remembered that salvation, that's an afterlife of, after you die. Your name is spoken and Christianity came along and it was the most incredible, most successful thing ever that ever happened because Christianity says, not only will your name be remembered, but you will be bodily remembered and recovered with your family and your loved ones mm -hmm. in paradise. And so everybody's like, well, I, they, they, they glommed onto that. They love that, you know? And salvation, I ask all the philosophers I ever meet, what is your concept of salvation, which you just expressed? And uh, I, I don't know, like it's, it, you know, before Christianity, was your, it, it was the, the deeds that you did and your name living forever. After mm -hmm. Christianity, it was like you living forever. And I'm Western philosophy, of course. I'm not like, I, I don't know Eastern, you know, I don't have it. But you actually like, do. You just don't know. You do. You just don't know. You do. Well, I can tell the way you talk. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, like for me, for instance, like what is my legacy? What is what? It, what is my living legacy? What is my legacy after I die? Well, the, my book, The Alabaster Girls, you know, sells so many copies every day. It has for ten years, steady as a rock. And what if I die? Does it sell the same? You, you, does it keep going? It, it all lives me, you know? And um, actually, that's fascinating because, you know, what, it, you know, what are we trying to do? What, what's, what's our motivation? What's your motivation for this podcast? You know, it has to be because we are trying to find, no, it, it is for certain because we're trying to find our connection back to the sacred concept of beauty and beauty is to me is like the number one operative word in all my in all my work for 20 years you know yeah. and you well, know yes. it and you, you, yeah. it. you speak good yes. as yeah yeah i love it um i uh i had the opportunity to speak at an event fairly recently and uh they asked me to speak on whatever i wanted to and i actually chose to speak on Where? beauty uh in dallas at a um uh, yeah i was in a a, a mastermind group a lot of like, it's kind of sort of a spiritual biohacking kind of a thing. No um, kidding. But I That's spoke. Cool. Yeah, I spoke. My topic is, um, and I'm, I actually have a book outline for it. It's called um, Portals of Beauty because I'm fascinated with. Say it again. You have a book. I, I'm, I have one outlined. So based on this topic, oh, it inspired cool. me. And I have like the I have an intro and a chapter one dictated, but it's called portals um, of portals, portals of Beauty, and it's about teaching people cool, what is a portal of beauty and how do you open it? And it, and it uses the understanding of like how you describe like the, we have upper energy and lower energy. Um, I would look at that. Like, uh, we have, there's a, there's a feminine energy and a masculine. There's a, there's a polarity. There's a, there, there, like, it seems like there's a duality or a polarity in things like a North and a South. And these two pull us in different directions and flow states and beauty are when you integrate both of them at the center. And the only way you can integrate both of them is through non-judgment and accepting. So like Carl Jung, for example, was very much into accepting like the, um, he understood we have a shadow and other unintegrated parts of us that come from our very deep primal self that if you don't confront and, and bring love to, they express themselves unconsciously through behaviors that create dysfunction or entropy in the world, right? So you, so you might as well confront them and bring them up, let them breathe, you know? And, uh, and so a classic example might be, we were talking about the hyper-masculine movement, which is a very yang um, movement. But the problem with it is in its toxic or extreme levels, it chokes out beauty, right? Because it, it, it judges the, the feminine. It says feminine energy, emotions, or weakness. 
judges the masculine too. It's like it's, it, it chokes out beauty and feminine and beauty and masculine too. Yes. And you can swing the other way where people become so caught up in, in, uh, in feeling good or in the emotional world that they, they, you know, you have the broke artist and the, and the kick-ass entrepreneur. One can't make money. The other one can't keep their family, you know, <laughs> right? In, 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 in those yeah. two, imagine how those two, if they were in a room, how much judgment they'd have of each other. The artist would be like, oh, I could never have that much structure in my life. That's just like, sounds horrible. And the, and the other guy's like, how can you just be so flowy? You know, you need to be more like disciplined. And if they, if they merge together and learn from each other and overcame their judgment, they would create an integration that would create a, a, a much more functional human being that could kick ass and make music, you know, and kick ass and make love, right? <laughs> Not just one or the other. Yeah. So how we do that, there's, I think, like practices that help you within the self and through others to open a, what I call like a portal. Cause I imagine these like two circles overlapping each other, like a Venn diagram. And in the center, you create this like vesica piscis, which is also like a vagina. <laughs> it's like a portal that beauty comes out of where you give birth to beauty and it requires you to integrate your right and left hemispheres, your masculine, feminine, and to learn how to feel those different energies and make none of them wrong. So you become a whole being. Wow. That's the, the idea behind it. Well said, man. That's, that's great, man. It's all your fault, man. You got me on this beauty path. Well, I tell you, my counsel to you, my, my brother, Eric is like, yeah. go back to what you learned as a child in your religion. Yeah. And take the, take the good, the good qualities out of that, you know? Absolutely. There's beautiful, beautiful energy. I don't know Mormonism at all, but I know that there's a sense of community and, and absolutely. And, and, you know, so go back to those and, and take those, extract those things and mm -hmm. use them in your future work for certain. You can't, you can't disparage your path. Like, like young, young women and men, and men can't disparage their, their youthful beauty. And, and, you know, their youthful body, the same thing with your youthful religion, you take it and, and incorporate the things that were beautiful there and strong and necessary for this world. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. take it back. You know, I don't believe in organized religion, you know, and I don't believe in, 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 uh, um, like you have to like follow an I ideology at all, but there was something was taught to you, your young heart that you still believe and take the good things from it and, and discard things that were like oppressive and those can discard it. Yeah. You don't need it. Right. But take that back, take that back into your work, into your, into your language and into your life and into your discourse. And you'll change people. You change people with that. Cause that's a good thing. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Thank you. That's, um, I agree. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So tell us about just a slight shift in gears. Cause I like to, um, we're coming up on an hour here and I, and I, I always want people to walk away with, um, it's important <laughs> that we, we have, we have the capacity to integrate, you know, we can have a, we can have an awareness of something. We can wake up to ourselves and then the real work Actually, begins yeah. where it's like, you know, practical application. Um, and I know that you, um, you know, hmm. you have a, you have some things available for one. If someone wants to, um, get a copy of the, your book, the Alabaster Girl, I think those are still available. Am I correct? I, excuse me. Yeah. If you want a copy of my book, go to alabastergirl.com. Simple alabastergirl.com. And I'll, and, 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 and I give a book away for free as a gift. It, it's, uh, I, um, I ask you to pay for the shipping and handling and the cost of the book. That's it. And, and I get no yeah, profit. I, fact, I, I, in, in fact, alabastergirl.com, I've done thousands of books, probably. This is weird now. I think about it now because we, we print them here in Romania. We have got, we, we print 2000 or 3000 at a time. And I've given out probably eight or 9,000 books from alabastergirl.com, which I signed by hand. Wow, I did a lot of signatures, man. I signed by hand and I send it to you in the mail and you pay the cost of the mailing and the, and the package and the cost of the book, which is $10, 9.95. And I actually lose 
nobody knows this, but I lose two dollars on a book every time I send one out. I've done it for years. So if you want a copy of the book, Alabaster Girl, signed by me, hand signed by me, I'll send it to you. That's better than I got. I bought, I bought it at the bookstore, man. I got no signature in here. Yeah. Man. <laughs> well, give me your address. I'll send you one, man. Because like I have a, like a whole system here. Totally. I to- I'll sign it I and totally send it to you. I totally didn't bait you on that. <laughs> No, 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 totally. I'll, 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 you send me your mailing address, your snail mail address. Any of you mm-hmm. are listening on this podcast, send me your snail mail address. I will sign it. I promise you and put it in the mail. I'll lose money on it. And I don't care because I want you to read it. I want you to, 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 yeah. I want, I want you to, to be caught up in it, you know, because why not? Life is short. One of his days would be dead, you know? You know what I think is one of the greatest. I'm gonna pl- just to add a little extra plug on your book here because I'm like I, I I have recommended your book. I have friends that read it. I have a little men's group I do, and I've I talk about wow. them. Yeah, so uh, I'm a, I'm it's it's very valuable. Um, but here's what I think you should consider if you're thinking about like why should I read this book? I've seen both it transform in a, like both men and women. There's just think about that for a moment. Yeah, books written for women, you know, and yeah, books written for men, and it still kind of comes at it from this like versus mentality. And that, not that there isn't good, like there isn't value in it. It's a good thing. Sometimes men need to get together and talk about men shit. You know, that's totally fine. But Zan, you figured out a way, like, like I said, you channel you the the sacred move through you, right? And it, 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 and that's what poetry really is. And this book comes out in a poetic way. There's enough practical application, but also the feeling that comes along with it is something that you feel women resonate with it. it the book seduces women. Like yeah. in, in, in the true sense of sedu- seduction, because it resonates it. I've seen them gush over the content. I've seen your interviews with women. I see them like they're I'm like, oh, my God, a man who's finally saying it. He's finally saying it. It's like, mm-hmm. where are these men? It's like, I'll do anything for, like the, these kind of guys are the ones I, I want to dance with. And like, I get to be my full, beautiful self. I get to be sexy and I get to be the Madonna and the whore with this exactly. guy. Right. I don't have to yeah, choose. I, I don't have yeah. to choose one of those. So if you want to be that kind of guy and I've seen when I've, um, uh, I, I saw such a shift in like when I, in my dating life, I'm currently single and the last girl I was with like, I am currently single, but I can call and and often get called by and, and checked in with all my exes, even from like more than 10 years ago. They still like to stay in touch because you have a connection that's so honest that it's it's there's something bigger than whether you're together or not. You're never an ex. And yeah, they're never an ex. They're never an ex. Um, yeah. In fact, my first podcast episode that I'll be releasing is with my ex-girlfriend. He was, uh, she was a, the ex-girlfriend of Evan Pagan, actually. And I ended up meeting her. How crazy is that? I met her randomly in a Starbucks. But you know, we talk about what is it like to <laughs> – right? yeah. You can't make this shit up, dude. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Simple, man. Are you kidding yeah. me? Incredible, dude. I know. That's, you can't – yeah. Sacred plays some funny games in your life. Um wow. But that book, but your book speaks to that. Like it's like if if you want something different, if you want something that's true, if you want something that has like magic and poetic, but it's also grounded and practical, just stop what you're doing and just read the damn book. Uh, it, it's Thank it's important. That. Yeah, yeah. And what I don't else? mean in the way of like okay, like uh, enterprise at all. But I get it, man. Yeah. I understand hundred yeah. percent. Um, you also have some like groups or programs. You do some stuff in Romania. Could you just illustrate a little bit? So like book, a book could be a good step one. If someone resonates with that, how else could they maybe, um, read the book that that's my, my, my greatest, my greatest joy is that you read the book and you get something from it. If you want, uh, I don't do so much coaching anymore. I used to do a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, one-on-one coaching. I don't do it unless you have like a really specific problem with a girl or a girl you started dating or, or your wife or something. And you need some very specific and I'm very expensive <laughs> because I'm very accurate too. If you tell me everything, you, you bring to me everything. I'll tell you what your next steps are. 
Um, so I do that one-on-one coaching with the guys and I also do, yeah, that's it. Um, I do, I do a, a, a live seminar in Romania with me and guys and one-on-one experiences with girls called WWZD, which is what would Zan do? In other words, in okay. this situation, this is how I see the world. If I was standing in a, in a bar or a club or, or a party or something, this is how I would stand beside me because I'm going to show you. So I do this kind of a, like a live experience. You stand beside me and I'm going to show you with girls, with real girls, how I operate, how I see the world, how I do sub communication, how I let the women know that I see you and I'm, I'm interested. And you're going to watch it with me. You're going to, so, so I have that. So I do it. In other words, a course called WWZD, which I do a couple times a year. And I do one on one coaching for guys who are trying to. I call it uh, my my gunslinger coaching. You're like I'm a gunslinger. So you have a problem with a girl or a situation with a girl or you just started a relationship with a girl and you want to know your best step forward, you come to me and I'll tell you what you do, what you text, that kind of thing. So anyway. And um, I don't know. You know you're I, talking a lot about community on the – like earlier, you mentioned community. Um, I mm. seem to recall that you have. We have. Is, we there, have, is there any type of like? Do you have a group or something? Any kind yeah, of group? Yeah, totally. Or? We have. We have an online course called the the Way of the Amorati. So my my philosophy is called Ars Amorata, which is fake Latin for the art of beauty, the art of love. Okay, and we have a fake uh, Latin named group of men called the Amorati. So we have members for 15 years over the world, all over the world. We have Amorati members. Guys have tattooed the A on their arm, you know, this A. Look. <laughs> I have it on my arm. And there's like 40 guys that, that tattooed this A on their body somewhere. And the idea is that is that we're, we're a different class of men that try to understand and try to, to have a different experience with women. So I have a I have a course. I have a 90-day course that is like a, called the the way of the Amorati. And if you want to sign up for the course, contact me. Right? You know what I mean, right? And uh you sign up for the course and when you graduate at the end of the course, you're you're a member of the Amorati, which is this we have a group of men um that I do calls with every month and we and we have a discourse. So I don't know. That's awesome. And how can, uh, is there a website for that? Or you say contact you, what's the best way to do that? Amorati.net. So A M O R A T I.net. Perfect. Cool. We'll put or a link. Contact me personally. Yeah. 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 Very cool. So we have a, we have a group, a great group of men who are, who are caught up in this conversation, who want to know more about this, this philosophy. And who are, who are great. So, so the women of the world ask me, where are the real men? I say, are you kidding me? Right there. The Amorati men. So come with us. Yeah, the ones with the so, tats yeah. on their arm. <laughs> That's right. Right here, man. I got mine on my here. ass. Yeah, <laughs> tramps them. No. No. Anyway. So I'm still, I'm still yeah, vanilla. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, Zan, this has been uh, fantastic, dude. I, uh, I, I don't I, know if it's uh, helpful or not, but I believe in it. You know, I, I believe in it 100. percent It's helpful. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's helpful. I think I can think of all the times I've just listened to podcasts or conversations, and it gave me enough courage to like go out that night and and live into that energy. You know, like we do need. Uh, it, it's it's very helpful to have support. And uh, and know that other people are believing and acting upon the things that you know to be true in your heart, but maybe you just don't have enough. You just haven't had examples of that around you. Um, yeah. So it absolutely does help, and I appreciate you uh, taking the time to. You have a. Uh, you have the had an example there, man, for certain. You had it in your yeah. in your in your early life in your early religion for mm -hmm. certain. You had the example. Yeah.
take the good of that, take the good of that and take it in incorporate it into your, in your, your experience in your conversation, in your podcast in the future. And it's, I promise you, it's, it's the best you can have. Sincere Thank people you. around you, you know, from your childhood, they were sincere, maybe yeah. misguided, but they're sincere. Yep. Absolutely. You know? Very cool. Well, is there anything that I uh, should have asked you, but I didn't? Um, not really. No, no. Well, we'll My go ahead. And, uh... Oh yeah. Your birthday. You got any, you got um, any, uh, wild Zan plans? No, I'm, I'm turning it. I'm turning 60. So yeah, like, we'll I, I feel like I'm, tur I'm, I'm turning into a, like a, well, like I said, like, I'm, I feel like I'm turning into something is shifting in me into an elder, which I never had before. Cause I'm this young guy that like bangs girls, right? You know, that's what I do. <laughs> I like to bang and like, and I don't take anything seriously. I don't take myself seriously, but there's something shifting in me really realizing that there's a message to be said because you know, yeah. I don't know, man. So I, don't know. I almost Incredible. forgot. I wanted to, I do want to ask actually one more thing. Um, and, and it's totally what you just were <laughs> leaning into. So, uh, you don't have to reveal all, I don't even know how much you have prepared to talk about, but I know you're working on a new book. So I'm going to dig at you. A little yeah. bit. I am curious. I'm curious. A clue I'm sure the direction. Because the book, the book, the book, the alabaster girl, Mm -hmm. It was all about this concept of a man in a, in a conversation with women. And I'm going to tell you what the secrets of how I see women. So the book I'm writing now is a man in the conversation, the same man in the conversation with men and how I see men. Oh, and how okay. Can change things and how, you, how and, and very practical things that you can do. One, two, three, like whisper, like secret. Shh. Don't tell, don't tell the women, don't tell anybody, but do this. And you're going to be like magnificent. So I'm writing that book now. The book for the secrets of men. I like that. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like something inspired by your, uh, your group, the Amarati. Like having well, true. With, yeah. No, more, more, more my course, which is WWZD. What was Zan do? My course, yeah. I do, I, which I do like a couple times a year. Anyway, um, I want to talk. And I like, yeah, I like that it's, uh, it sounds like it's something more aimed towards the, um, yeah, because what would Zan do is more like, Girl. there's the philosophy. Now, here's what it looks like in action. Yeah. Because I've done philosophy for 20 years. This is yeah. what it looks like in action. And when I do it in, in Romania here, I hire, well, I don't hire, but, but I have girls that come in, in, in and join us in the experience. And I do exercises with girls. Sub, you know, sub communication, eye contact exercises, how you show up in the world, and and the girls are walking by, and how you, you express it. So I, I show it in in physicality, and the guys get to experience it and and get to try it. Yeah, so I'm. It's it's a it's a great 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 fun 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 uh, live experience that I that I'm that I've invented, and it's. It takes a philosophy and makes it practical. So, hundred percent. Very cool. Cool. Well, I'm Correct. glad we have uh, things to look forward to from Zan Perion, man. That you're still keeping yeah, at it. Girl. I'm not going to retire. Yeah, uh, that's I'm that's what that's for. Well. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> hey, that's a good. That, that's true. That's a good. That's his for yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Zan. Well, I know you have some uh, uh, some commitments tonight. You have some some beauty to be good to go witness. If anyone, uh, if you guys found this useful or you enjoyed the podcast, just, uh, we'd l I'd love to hear your comments below. If you have any questions for me, any other things you'd like to see, any thoughts, uh, about Zan, um, I'll put some links below as well, uh, for Zan's programs. If you want to get in touch with Zan and, uh, definitely get a copy of the Alabaster girl. That is a, a killer deal. Uh, do that, especially with the autograph from Zan himself. And with that, Zen, I'm going to let you go and uh, right. get back to beautiful Romania. Okay, brother. 100%. All right. Man. Well, thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>